This is Raven Dana at Walking Between the Worlds, and thank you for joining me today. It is Saturday, February 10th, the Lunar New Year. It is the year of the Wooden Dragon. Okay, this is Practical Magic, Class 2. Yes, it should have been out last week. Yes, it was delayed. I was doing a little dance with kidney stones, so I was quite distracted for a while. But I'm back, and I'm fine, and we're going to get on with life and get class two up. And I'll get class three up on Monday. Um, yeah, Monday. All right, so one of the things we're talking about today is the ethics of magic. So people, there's a lot of conversation about uh, only don't do any harm and um, the the tenet of Wicca right is not to do any harm I'm not suggesting in any way shape or form that you use your developing skills against people in a negative way so I want to be clear I'm not suggesting that any any more than I would suggest that you walk up to somebody and smack them because you felt like it right it's just <laughs> Uh, magic or non-magic, these kinds of things do not lend themselves to positive outcomes in life. However, if someone were to break into your home, or someone were to try to attack you, or someone were to threaten your children, I imagine you would have no qualms about fighting back, pushing back, calling the cops, doing what needs to be done to keep you and those you love safe. Correct? In the same way, energetically, using your magic, if there is something or someone that is wishing you ill or harm, there is no ethical challenge with creating a shield, creating a barrier that sends the ill intent back to the sender. That doesn't mean that you need to sit there and add some sort of uh, evil consequence or play queen of karma. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting a mirror of protection a way to shield yourself from anyone or anything who might wish to harm you or those you love. Now, one of the top ways to do that is by protective measures. So I've said this phrase to you before, and I'm going to say it again, that it's a really good practice to, to day and night, when you wake up and before you go to bed, when you do a meditation, when you do any kind of energy work, when you do anything, or when you feel um, unwell or vulnerable, right? When you feel like your energy's down and that you may be susceptible, because it's not, it, it's not just energetically susceptible to something coming through the ethers. When you feel susceptible, it also puts you in the crosshairs of other people who may have the same state of mind, whose immune systems may be low. So it's also a reference to helping you stay healthy, as well as staying mentally um, blocked off from people who would harm you. And so the phrase goes like this, may all our doors and gates and paths be open and all our doors and gates and paths between the worlds and may they be closed to any who would harm us or those we love very simple it's very clear and you're essentially calling upon your higher self guides guardians those who patrol the between worlds to say listen I need some shielding here okay and and that comes from Robert Moss by the way that saying that phrase that phraseology and you know ideally if someone really wishes you harm and you're in what can I say? You're in a more benevolent state of mind. You can shower them with good thoughts. I know it sounds weird. It, it, it has to do with changing the frequency of the energy, right? But if you can't pull it off, if you're scared, if you're angry, if you're in any of those states of mind, which I telling you, quite frankly, that would be me, right? Um, then you'll want to take some other measures. Now, one of the things that you can do is ask for your version of the divine benevolent mother figure, the, the universal mother, the divine mother, the mother goddess, Gaia, what, who or whatever you want to call that force, that loving power of the universe. You can ask for the ancient mother 
to surround this person or entity with her divine loving presence and contain or transmute that negativity, that will to harm. That's a very good way to go about this. It's, uh, and it doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't also shield, but it gives you another layer of protection. I'll say it that way. It gives you another means to calling on energies bigger than yourself to help you when you're not feeling your best self or when you're feeling attacked or when you're feeling vulnerable or when you're feeling sick, okay? Uh, any and all of those things. So if there's any, any persons in your life that you know are particularly uh, holding ill will towards you, then it, that's a good a dual, dual-sided practice to in a meditation or to light a candle to sit quietly and make the request Ancient Mother, please surround this person with your divine presence and neutralize the negativity they bear. And not just towards you, towards anyone. If you're a target, then other people are you know, also their target. So, and then as a secondary tool, to go ahead and vividly imagine, we've covered this in past classes, but it's worth mentioning again, to sit quietly and vividly using your breath, imagine from the center light of your being, as you breathe, as you exhale, the light within you grows and grows, and you find yourself in the center of a circle, of a sphere of glowing light. Then you can simply use the word shield, which is something I like to do, and that sphere, the outside of that sphere, when you speak the word shield, can become a mirror-like structure. So it let, only lets in that which is beneficial to you, that which is good and loving, that which is kind and of the light, and it holds off, it shields and reflects back any desires, wishes, energies that would harm you. Okay. So again, it's the kind of thing that when you lock your door and then you go out and you come in again, you have to lock your door again, right? So when you do a practice like that, you just don't want to do it once and forget you've ever done it and go on your merry way. You want to do, go back to it periodically and keep that shield set until the circumstance changes or the person or people go away or you feel better until the energy has lifted and you feel stronger and better. So again, these are some of this is just the essence of practical magic in creating ways to keep yourself safe and sound in an energetic world where there's a lot of chaos and turbulence. Because it, it's not just that you need to protect yourself from people who would wish you harm, but it's also that you know the general culture that we live in tends to repeat a lot of stories about people being awful and bad and negative. And so if you listen to that, if you are unfortunate enough to hear the news, then you might absorb some of that information and take it in in a way that kind of resets you and leaves you vulnerable towards people, certain kinds of people who would wish you harm. So you want to put your attention on that which is healthy and useful and benevolent and kind and loving. And I don't mean that in a hide your head in the sand kind of way. I mean that in a very practical way to look for and hold up and repeat stories of people who are kind and good and who support other human beings. That that because it helps to set your system to resonate in a certain way. It's really good magical protection as well as that it adds light and life and love to the, to the planet, to the world around you, which is a good thing, right? That's something we want to do. We don't want to be little vortices of negativity. We want to be uh, the, the radiant sun beaming the light of warmth on all that's in our vicinity, right? That's what we want to do. I know, and there might be a little background thought like, and if there's somebody nasty out there, may I may it burn them to a crisp. So just watch those thoughts because just watch those thoughts. They're not in your best interest, even though they might fly by. Please, please don't act on them. Okay. 
pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to what your dreams tell you because they're part of the language of magic, which is after the conversation of ethics, we want to move on to talking about the language of magic. Throughout many cultures, um, magic has used words and rhymes and images to move energy. So much like the language of our deep unconscious or and or our bigger, larger, higher self, the language of magic is also images and emotions. So that which generates those images and emotions is very powerful in the moving of energy, which is why through, through the ages, you'll find things like spells with words that rhyme. So it's less important that you get that kind of thing correct than it is that you feel the essence of, of the way the words and the sentiments are moving energy, right? So it's perfectly fine to create your own words, <clears throat> your own spells, if that's what you'd like to do. And um, it's not difficult. You can rely on things that are already there. If you wish for health, you can look up some spells about health. You can call upon whatever elementals resonate with you. Maybe you want to call upon the earth for healing, or you want to call upon the waters for emotional calming, or you want to call upon the air to quiet your busy mind, or you want to call upon the essence of fire to give you drive and motivation if you feel lethargic and um, unwilling, unable and willing to do much, right? So whatever is out of balance in you, whatever might be causing you a problem on a, even on a day-to-day -day basis, you can sit quietly and work a little magic aligning yourself with the element or elements that you feel are best suited to rebalance you. That's very practical magic. And I'm going to remind you to also be sure in connecting consciously, because we're always connected, we're part of the energetic world, the energetic realm, it is us, it moves through us, we move through it. But when we consciously tap in, you want to say thank you, all right? Um, light that candle, give that offering, throw some food out for the birds, leave something out for the squirrels if that suits your fancy. I, I want you to get in the habit of getting giving back to the world of nature that is so generous with with us, right? I mean, we have air and we have food and we have water and we have earth and we have building materials. We have plants that give us oxygen. So give something back. And sometimes it's as simple as uh, saving a couple mouthfuls of your favorite first cup of coffee and going out to pour it on the ground in gratitude, right? Or your favorite, whatever your favorite meal is, saving a few bites, not eating it all, and putting it outside for the animals. Like whatever it is for you that works, that's what you want to do to maintain that uh, give and take, that reciprocal awareness of the flow and movement of energy, especially if you're asking for help and you have received, sometimes even not asking, you have received the hidden hand of help that's uh, guided you along the path. Okay, again, pay attention to dreams. To get adept at practical magic, it's important to cultivate that dual awareness of being in the consensual world of ordinary, everyday, mundane activities and being also a participant in the worlds behind the world. The better you get at the dual citizenship, the easier it is to practice magic in a way that's in the flow and that works. So if you have a specific heritage that you resonate with, you might wanna look some things up and see what symbols are there, what protections uh, follow along those lines. I can remember my grandmother as a protection for, from lightning during thunderstorms. We lived on the top floor of an apartment building and there was nothing like a lightning rod. We were in the corner uh, apartment that faced the way the weather came zooming down the Hudson River. I grew up in Yonkers, New York. And my grandmother would, went on, on Palm Sunday, my grandmother would have us send us to church after mass to get extra palms and she'd keep them. Because in her tradition, uh, burning palms 
was a remedy, was a way to keep lightning from striking. All right, who knew? I, I, if someone else out there has heard of that, I'd love to know about it. Um, where exactly in her culture that came from, I, I actually don't, I don't even know. I have no idea, but it's something that she was very clear about, very specific about, and that she did regularly. And, you know, well, we were never hit by lightning, so that's a good thing. Um, but there are, there are certainly are protections in place culturally that you can look into, like um, certain things, certain things to put above a doorway, for example. Uh, iron nails put above a doorway is, is in many cultures a way of blocking negativity from entering your home. So there are little things that go with your heritage that you might, that you might want to look up. Also, even uh, things that you wear, things on your clothing, symbols, things that are meaningful to you, whether or not they go with your heritage, are useful for building energy and for changing the flow of energy. So if you have symbols, um, maybe in your family, for things that represent wealth and joy and harmony, then by all means, print those things, find some of those images, put them around your space, put them down and light a candle if that's something that you're working on. If you're working on increasing your prosperity, then look for images that are meaningful to you. Set those up in front of a, a space, in front of a candle, or in front of a, a, an image or a statue that's meaningful to you. And sit with that, work with that. Imagine vividly the results. And if you want to create some words that are attractors for wealth, for money, for prosperity of all kinds, then do that. And my suggestion is to pick a time when you're in a good mood, a good state of mind, when you're feeling positive and grounded, to set up your sacred space. And it doesn't matter, it could be a corner of the kitchen table or your desk, it doesn't have to be a dedicated space. It's nice if it is, it doesn't have to be. And use whatever symbols for prosperity work for you. Now, that means you could print them, you could draw them, you could cut and paste them, you can write uh, something down uh, again in uh, some kind of poetic rhythm that works for you and say it out loud. And the idea is to do that in a concentrated period of time where your mind, your body, your energy, your voice, your eyes are all trained on that particular thing, on feeling it through to the end, imagining that which you desire as if it has already happened, because that sends a line from this particular reality to the one in which you already have the thing that you want to have. Right, So you're not focusing on the not having, you're focusing on the experience of having whatever that is, the experience of being in that experience. And so you do that and then you let it go, right? It's like you send a letter in the mail, you don't run behind the letter until it gets delivered to the person's store. You put the letter in the mail, you trust that it will get there and you go about your business, you go about your day until eventually at some point the person calls you and says, hey, I got that card or hey, I got that gift. Well, you will get that. You will get those hints and clues from the universe, from the world at large, from the worlds behind the worlds as your message goes out there and begins to gather and send back information your way. So again, pay attention to your dreams. Look at uh, the things that show up in your environment. If you've never read Robert Moss's book, Sidewalk Oracles, it's really fun and it just speaks about this, how we are always being spoken to, but we don't always notice the language that we're being spoken to in, which is this language of symbols and images and feelings. So that's, um, you know, it's a way to know that something's coming back your way. You'll, you'll get clues and hints. You might even find, I remember a long time ago, it's probably at least, I don't know, 20 years ago maybe, I, was, uh, I, I did some work for uh, bringing in money, for bringing in abundance. Now, I didn't, I, what, I didn't specify all that much about what I was bringing in, but I'm going to tell you, I did find, and this is the only time in my life this has happened, 
and found a $50 bill on the sidewalk. There was no one around, no one that he could, I could even think about, like who might have dropped it. And I was so grateful, I was so happy. And with that $50, I took myself to lunch and then I bought a couple of little things for people and sent it to them, right? And out of that, out of, out of just that, one of those people uh, actually said, oh, I've been meaning to uh, give you a call, I have a referral for you. And lo and behold, um, I got another client and I needed one. And then that client referred another client. So again, this is how it works. I, I wasn't giving out gifts to gain favor. I was just happy in that moment that I'd received this windfall and sent little things to people that I knew they'd appreciate. And uh, you know, the universe tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, here's a couple clients for you, which was perfect. It was exactly what I needed at the time. Okay, so some common symbols that you can use. If you're not in the mood for researching symbols, I get it, I understand it. You can look at symbols like a circle, a spiral, the phases of the moon, a star, you know, like a pentagram, fire, earth, air, water, and spirit, a six-pointed star, the infinity sign, right? An ank, ankh, the eye of Horus, and different symbols of sacred geometry if they resonate for you. So the next thing is the anatomy of a spell. An incantation, a spell, a charm, an enchantment, or a bewitchery is a magical formula intended to trigger an effect on a person, objects, or circumstance. The formula can be spoken, sung, or chanted. And that's a quote from Llewellyn, author, um, author of Crafting Spells. Okay, So when you build a spell, you want to trust yourself. Right, it, it, it's like you do you do cast spells all the time. We do this all the time. We're just not aware that we're doing it. So when we say things out into the world repeatedly, and then we're surprised when they happen, especially when they're not pleasant, yeah, it, I'm gonna invite you to take pause and look back at how you've been talking about yourself or about your life or about things, right? Because those words cultivate energy, and that's all magic is. It, except that it's deliberate. It is practicing magic is the deliberate art and skill of building and directing energy, your personal energy, and getting in the flow of larger energies so that they will assist your desired outcome. Okay. So I'm just going to read this to you. When you build a spell yourself, do it from the ground up infuse it with your deliberateness, your preferences, your wishes, your energies. It's not just something you read from somebody else's pages. It will then carry your unique signature and resonate through your core. It will be much more powerful and complete than any ready-made charm could ever be, making you the integral part of the magic from start to finish. So I'm telling you this because I don't want you to shy away from playing with magic um, on your own. Uh, you know, again, that idea of reading a spell or reading a formula or following it to the letter of the law and then being disappointed because nothing happened has a lot to do with whether or not you're able to generate, to gen up the state of mind and the imagery required to move energy. Okay, I'm going to give you some steps. So they're very simple. Make a clear intention and visualize the outcome. Select whatever materials make sense, whatever symbols might work for you, um, candles, drawing materials, paper, dirt, seed, stones, whatever, doesn't matter. Look at the correspondences and see if the phase of the moon has any meaning for you. See if the day of the week reveals anything to you. Just notice what time feels right to send this energy out? Create or borrow. Again, if, you, if you're getting all tangled up in your own roots over writing a spell or creating words, it's, that's okay too. You can borrow words that voice your intention with purpose and power. If you wish to ask for help, you can ask for help. You can say, I don't, I don't know how to do this. I don't want to use somebody else's words. I'm asking my fill-in-the-blank guides, guardians, spirit animals, 
ancestors to help me with this process. And then you simply weave the smell, the, the smell, you weave the spell, which simply means that you bring those elements together and you enact them in whatever way is meaningful for you. A calm space, you ground yourself, you set out your tools or symbols, light the candle or pour a bowl of water, whatever, again, whatever works for you, you say the words and you allow the energy to build by imagining the desired outcome. You might even say the words three times, you know, three's the charm. Well, there's a reason for that. Sometimes it takes us saying something through three times to get it, to hear ourselves say it, to resonate with it, to call up those images, right? So say the words, let that, let that energy build, and then allow yourself to step inside the experience. So you actually experience the thing you're asking for already done. Say thank you, ground yourself again, and allow the energy to dissipate. Now, I'm gonna tell you a true story. Uh, a woman who couldn't get her house sold. Good, good friend of mine, really good friend of mine. And she bought a new home. Um, you know, the, the market is all about selling and buying houses right now. So um, the home that she had been living in, she knew would sell or should sell for a whole lot more than she paid for it. She had done a lot to the, to the area and to the house. And the house that she bought was a fair chunk more expensive than the one she had been living in, but she didn't imagine that would be a problem. She uh, moved into, bought and moved into the new home and then was having a hell of a time getting the other house sold. And even the realtor was like, I don't get it. So long story short, we talked about it and she revealed that she was feeling a whole lot of attachment to the old house and to things there and to th and because it was her first time moving away from the place that she had been born in which she had been born and raised right she had been born and raised in florida and this was north carolina so she was having this um i don't know kind of strange nostalgic attachment to the old house even though it was not a good fit for her so what she did was she drew a picture of that she's a, a good she's a good artist she drew a picture of the house and a kind of a stick figure drawing her of herself. And then she drew one by one these threads of attachment that she felt, things that she felt were connecting her to that house. And she took scissors and she cut those threads and she burned the side with the house and the threads. Well, not too surprisingly to me anyway, 48 hours later, the house sold. That's how quickly that worked. And she even told me after she did it, she said, I can't believe how light I feel. I can't believe how much freer I feel. What was I thinking hanging on to that? I said, it doesn't matter. As long as you're clear that you really let it go, we're, you're good, we're good. And so yeah, her anyway, 48 hours later, the realtor called um, and everything worked out and the house got sold and you know, she got on with her life, happy camper, true story. So, like I said, it doesn't have to be a big deal. It just has to be clear and with intent and some awareness of what's going on. All right, simple spells, candle magic. You can carve your intention or some symbols that represent your intention into the side of a candle and let the energy go out through the worlds as it burns down. It's one way to do things. Fire magic, something that you're trying to exit from your life, something that you're trying to burn away or replace. You can write it down and throw it into the fire. Similarly, you can use water magic, wind magic, whatever, whatever does it for you. An example of using water magic is to put energy in the water. That, For example, maybe you're not feeling uh, mentally grounded and you can't get things done. Well, sit there with some water or your iced tea or even your coffee for that matter. It's still all water-based and put some energy in there that, that feels to you like this is grounded, stable. You know, think up some mountains, think up maybe a nicely flowing stream, whatever to you means moving forward with calm direction. Do that, then drink it, let it set in your system for a few minutes, 
and then go back and do the thing that you were trying to do before. Uh, um, things like this are very simple. Again, this is why it's called practical magic, right? You don't have to uh, wait till the moon is full and draw a circle and light four candles. And you don't have to do that. You can do that if there's something really big going on, but you don't have to do that to practice magic every single day in little ways that work. Okay. So, um, again, note that there are different cultures that, are diff that associate the elements with different directions and different colors. But um, by and large, we can look at the south relating to fire, uh, the north relating to earth, the east relating to air, and the west relating to water. So you might also play a little bit if you feel ambitious with the elementals, the energies and spirits associated with the elements that indwell and give consciousness to the elements themselves. And you can, again, if you're, if you're ambitious, you can do a little research and find gods and goddesses associated with the elements and directions. You can look for different animals, colors, tarot cards, um, whatever adds to your repertoire. All right, protection, clearing, and practical magic. We covered a little bit of that when we started. The best protection for unwanted energies is to practice psychic hygiene. And all that means is paying attention to your thoughts. Am I stuck in a negative loop? Am I expecting the worst? Am I on some kind of... Um, thinking pattern where I think, oh, things have been good for a while, so the other shoe is going to fall. Watch out for those kinds of things, because those are the kinds of energetic log jams that leave you open to things that you don't want, okay? Um, these are some little things that I'm going to offer you as suggestions to help with the psychic hygiene. Watch those repetitive thoughts and narratives, right? Change them up. Notice, interrupt, redirect whenever you feel that coming on. Also, if something like that is going in your ears, don't be polite. Stop the person from speaking if you don't want to hear it. I mean, you don't have to be a jerk about it, but you can say, hey, hey, ho, ho, ho. I really like, I'm not interested in gossiping or you're talking to the wrong person. You need to go talk to that person that you have an issue with, right? So you don't have to listen to that stuff. All right, greet the day consciously, and I mean that, to when you get out of bed, instead of flying out of bed, rushing to the bathroom, shoving the toothbrush in your face, throwing yourself on the toilet, don't do that. Give yourself a few minutes before any of those things happen to greet the day. If that means you get to walk outside in your garden, beautiful, do that. If the best you can do is Flip the window open and stick your head out and breathe the air. Even if it's cold, that's okay. Greet the day. Acknowledge your participation in a new day. That's, it's a great way to uh, stay in the flow. Meditate, right? If you don't meditate, it's a great habit to have. Ground yourself regularly, right? Get grounded. Um, refuse to engage or listen to gossip. You can also use salt baths or, or you can get a brick of salt to use to scrub yourself if you prefer to shower. Uh, it's a good way to keep your energy clear, especially if you've been in places that are negative. If you've been, if you've been on the bus and somebody's been in a fight, if you've, if you've been downtown and um, you're in the middle of a big mess and there are police cars and ambulances and the energy is chaotic, Wash that crap off you when you get home. If you go to a hospital to visit somebody, wow, now there's a place that's loaded with, you name it, emotion and mm, things that we don't really want to talk about today. We'll save that for another day. But it's loaded with things that could potentially be icky and sticky. So you go visit somebody in the hospital, come home and salt that stuff off you, right? All that old energy, all those the sickness that you were walking through to visit whoever you were there visiting. Um, use something to cleanse your aura, your fields, your energy, sage or sweet grass or um, 
I don't care if you use an olive branch, but something that pleases you, where you kind of bathe your energy and you lift off any negativity and, and get grounded again. And remember, wherever your attention goes, that's where the energy flows. So watch out for your own biases, your own judgments, your own negative assumptions, your own way that you talk bad about yourself to yourself, right? Pay attention to that stuff and hit the brakes on it. Even if you're talking to yourself, you can say to yourself, hey, don't talk to, don't talk to her that way. You don't get to say that stuff to her. Things, she's fine. I'm fine. We're fine. Right? All right. And just remember, the stronger the imagination, the more solid the results. The stronger the imagination, the more real the results. Just bear that in mind. Okay. And finally... For psychic hygiene. The last thought I want to leave you with today is for the practice, the developing skill of practical magic, you want to allow yourself to have permission to stop and notice beauty wherever you find it. Moments of kismet where you find them, synchronicities where you find them. You want to stop and acknowledge the magic that's flowing around you all the time. You will allow yourself to do that and your experience of yourself in the world, I promise you, will change. You will find yourself more in the flow than ever and less likely to succumb to negativity than ever. You will find that the things that you desire and you strive for, you become more aware of your own roadblocks. You are shown things in a way that's a little more gentle and generous. Now, that's not to say it's always the way it's going to go. The universe really likes to shake things up, right? Our higher self uh, has a sense of humor. Sometimes if things go smoothly for a long time, then, you know, somebody comes and shakes that box and uh, we have to deal with what's going on in our lives. But that's okay because when you are practiced in being in the flow, when you're practicing psychic hygiene, then even on a day when you feel like crap on a cracker, you can still find these moments of beauty and grace that are corrective measures that pull you back to the truth of what you are as a powerful being of energy in an energetic multiverse. And that is the truth. That's what you are. It's what we are. So until next time, have a wonderful day and practice some practical magic. Thanks for tuning in today. Bye now.